Welcome to Too Fond of Books. My name is Janelle and this is my Jane Austen July Week 2 Wrap Up video. Now, I was not entirely sure I would be able to record this video in a timely fashion because we have had some internet problems here. Um, Sunday afternoon, uh, or, or yeah, earlier on Sunday anyway, um, we had no internet and we were trying to figure out what was going on and uh, it would kind of, you know, flicker on and off. But then we also had the additional problem of our landline going down as well, which was very unusual. So we called, you know, the place and the earliest they could send a tech out to look at it was Tuesday afternoon. Isn't that appalling? Anyways, um, it's now Monday, late Monday morning, and um, the phone rang, and so we were like, oh, if the landline's on, maybe. So we uh, did some fiddling around, and our internet's back up for now. So I'm recording this video, and I'm hoping to get it uploaded um, in time to post for this afternoon. So that's been our excitement around here. So since it's Jane Austen July, I have my beautiful penguin Pride and Prejudice mug that I got when we were on our trip to England. I got it in London. There was a bookshop on Gloucester Road and I can't remember what it's called, although it may it may actually been like Gloucester Road Bookshop. I'm not entirely sure. Anyways, they sold these mugs and I really wanted, had wanted one, an Agatha Christie one, but they didn't have any, but they had this fantastic Pride and Prejudice one, which is perfect for Jane Austen July. So, week one, I got off to a really strong start, and I forgot to even mention that I watched some movies and adaptations, and so I continued with that. So I'm gonna start with those before I get to the books. The first one that I watched was the Jane Austen Book Club, um, which was a recommendation from Kelly from Books I'm Not Reading, and one other booktuber, and I can't remember now who it was. Both of them said the same thing though, which was intriguing. Both of them said that the movie's really good, watch the movie, but don't read the book, the book's not very good. <laughs> I have not yet read the book, but I did watch the movie. It was on Prime and it was really enjoyable. Um, I wasn't entirely sure kind of if I would like it, where it was going, um, but, but yeah, it was a good movie. I loved that they formed a book club just to talk about Jane Austen. So they read all six of her books, uh, one a month, and discussed them, which I think is a great idea. Um, I would totally be open to a book club like that. Um, I liked uh, hearing some of the discussions that they had about the books, and but one of my actually my one of my favorite parts of the movie was that when it was a new month and they were reading a new book, there would be shots of each of them reading their edition and they were always different and so I liked getting glimpses of the different editions that, that they were reading. I thought that was really fun. So yeah, so that was really good. And then I went to an old favorite uh, and I watched Sense and Sensibility. This is the Ang Lee one from um, 95, I think. And I love this edition. Uh, I can't help it. The, the actors might be too old for their roles, but I don't care. Um, <laughs> because it's just so, so well cast. Emma Thompson is amazing. Um, Kate Winslet is great. Hugh Grant, he makes a good Edward. Honestly, he does. And um, Alan Rickman as Colonel Brandon. I mean, hello. And then everybody else. I mean, they're so, it's so well cast. Uh, it's unbelievably well cast. Um, and I, I just, I love it. I love the cast. I love the music in this movie is so phenomenal. Um, and I was saying this to my, my husband too, is that this is the most quotable Jane Austen adaptation ever. Aaron and I quote from this all the time. So we quote from the part where um, Sir Middleton and Mrs. Jennings are like teasing them about um, the mysterious Mr. F and they're coming up with, you know, names that, that have, that begin with F. And so we always go, Fortescue? <laughs> that one. And uh, so, oh, I came into Devonshire with no other view. Or, we've been enjoying very fine weather. <laughs> the roads are very dry. You know, that kind of stuff. And kind of the most quoted one, I think, from the entire film is, give me an occupation or I shall run mad. <laughs> so I, I loved, I loved watching this one again. I also watched 
the uh, BBC adaptation of Emma from, I think this was from 2009, and I really enjoy this one as well. Again, I think it's really well cast. I love Michael Gambon. I think he's a great actor and he is really good as Mr. Woodhouse. I think he plays that role perfectly because he is, you know, he's a hypochondriac who could be really quite annoying, um, but he plays him very sympathetically and I really love that and I really love the relationship between Emma and her father in this adaptation. Um, I think that's phenomenal and yeah, the rest of the cast is, is really good too. I really enjoy this adaptation as well. Alright, so let's get to the books that I've been reading. First off, I have to show you my Regency Reticule. My fantastic mother-in-law made this for me. Isn't that beautiful? Now it's a little bit larger than a reticule is supposed to be, but I don't care. I think it's fantastic. And so I thought that I would put my second Jane Austen novel that I read in it because it's the perfect size. And this is my edition of Northanger Abbey. Can you see the little it's a it's a head there. Um, I love this edition. Here are the end papers. <laughs> it says this book belongs to and then a good book is the precious life blood of a master spirit. And that's Milton. Um, so this is uh, the King's Treasuries of Literature General Editor Sir A.T. Quiller Couch London J.M. Dent and Sons Limited. That's the edition. And it is from, oh yes, look at this. Isn't that great? I love this edition. So this was last reprinted in 1955, first printed in this edition in 1934. It includes an introduction written by M.E. Day, and then the text, and then there's a few notes at the end. I love Northanger Abbey. Um, this is a reread for me and I just enjoyed it so much. It's, I think it's one of the most just enjoyable stories that Jane Austen told. Um, so Catherine Moreland, she's also quite young. I think she's potentially the youngest Jane Austen heroine. She's 17 and she gets invited to go to Bath with the Allens. They take her to Bath and uh, she meets a variety of people and the story goes from there. She is a girl who loves novels. She loves um, Anne Radcliffe, for example, and uh, <laughs> kind of lives in the world of her imagination a little bit. And I just, I just love, I love this, this book. Um, so there was a couple things here that I wanted to, um, to read to you. Um, so she is talking to Catherine, um, no, this is uh, the friendship between Catherine and Isabella. Um, and they, when it was wet and dirty, they would shut themselves up to read novels together. Yes, novels, for I will not adopt that ungenerous and impolitic custom so common with novel writers of degrading by their contemptuous censure the very performances to the number of which they are themselves adding, joining with their greatest enemies in bestowing the harshest epithets on such works and scarcely ever permitting them to be read by their own heroine, who, if she accidentally take up a novel, is sure to turn over its insipid pages with disgust. Alas, if the heroine of one novel be not patronized by the heroine of another, from whom can she expect protection and regard? I cannot approve of it. Let us leave it to the reviewers to abuse such effusions of fancy at their leisure, and over every new novel to talk in threadbare strains of the trash with which the press now groans. She goes on for the rest of the page and then this other page as well in this little kind of rant about novels, which was awesome. And then um, when Catherine is talking with uh, Henry Tilney, who also is fantastic, I love Henry Tilney, and he says, the person, be it, a, be it gentleman or lady, who has not pleasure in a good novel must be intolerably stupid. <laughs> so I read Northanger Abbey. 
I also read The Jane Austen Society by Natalie Jenner. I read this as a buddy read with Carolyn from Carolyn's Reading Ramblings and it was really fun to talk about this book with her as we read along. This is a historical fiction set in 1946, 45, 46, um, in the village of Chawton in Hampshire, which is where Jane Austen lived for a time. And it's about the, uh, a group of people who decide to start a Jane Austen society and they want to um, a pro a get um, a cottage where she lived for a time where there was a connection and then use it uh, to create a museum for Jane Austen. And frankly, that's the, the part of the book that I loved the most. And so you have a number of different characters who all just love Jane Austen. And I loved that there were, throughout the book, there were many, many conversations that they had with each other about Jane Austen's works. And um, I loved that part. I kind of felt like I was part of a book club when I was <laughs> reading those sections. Um, so for example, um, he said, he nodded in agreement. I should tell you I am reading Emma again. Every time I find a new clue, something I missed before. It's like she's still writing these stories, still giving them life. So I loved that all the characters uh, love Jane Austen and her books. Um, and so in this discussion that they're having about Emma, I liked getting different people's um, perspectives on stuff and um, here was one perspective. Emma is not selfish per se. She is self-interested in a way that most people can't afford to be. Well, I thought that was a very apropos uh, statement. <laughs> so I did enjoy, I did enjoy this book. I thought there were times where the author didn't give me enough information. I would, I wanted more information about something that was kind of just thrown, thrown at me in the story. And also towards the end, certain things, I felt certain things happened a little bit too fast because she was wrapping it up. Um, but it was an enjoyable read and I did really enjoy reading it with uh, Carolyn. Uh, so I need to show you, I have a blackout in my bingo card, so that is very exciting. Now, to the books that I am still currently reading. I started the Jane Austen Marriage Manual by Helen Amy. And according to the back, I read this in my library haul video. She takes us through kind of the courtship and marriage and what was expected of people and the etiquette and all of that. Um, and that's technically true, but um, it's unfortunate that this book, what isn't more clear about what it is because, let me show you, this much of the book is what the author wrote about courtship and marriage. This much of the book is contemporary literature on courtship and marriage. Now I find that very interesting and I am slowly making my way through it. It is a little more difficult to read nonfiction from the 1700s, but there is no, like the author doesn't like give her own thoughts or analysis on this literature. She's just reprinted it in the book. So this much of the book is just reprinting. So, I mean, she's done good work of gathering this material together, finding it and gathering it together. But I would have liked to have seen, you know, her thoughts and analysis on, on that literature. So the book is good. It's just going to take me longer to get through because it's harder to read. Um, you know, it's, it takes me longer to read um, literature, nonfiction, from you know the 17 the 1700s I did make a note here um, when she would so this is the part where she's writing about uh, customs in courtship and marriage under legal requirements this part was really interesting um, uh, Hardwick's Marriage Act of 1753 laid out the legal requirements for marriage and um, the 
the ceremony had to take place within the canonical hours of eight in the morning and 12 noon, which I thought was really interesting and explains why they have marriage or wedding breakfasts, because it has to happen in the morning. <laughs> so I did, I did think that was really interesting. Um, so yeah, so I'm slowly making my way through the Jane Austen marriage manual. I'm also still reading, I'm reading the Watsons and Emma Watson. So I did read the Watsons. So for uh, the prompt of reading something, um, some other of Jane Austen's work than one of her six novels, I read the fragment of the Watsons and I do, I do really wish that she had finished that story. I was intrigued. Um, you meet Emma Watson, who is a girl who is, I think she's like, 18 or something 18 19 and she's just coming back home she had been living for many years with an aunt um, that aunt was remarried and the new husband wasn't interested in in taking on Emma so Emma has gone back home um, her father is a clergyman who is ill um, and her older sister who is nine years older than her has been taking care of her of him and uh, so she comes back home and she um, it opens with her sister taking her into the town um, to go to uh, an assembly and so what I really liked is this whole description of um, getting to an assembly preparing for an assembly and then there's a lot about the ball itself uh, which I found really really interesting Emma Watson then is the novel, the completed novel by Joan Aiken. She took the fragment and completed the story and it's okay. She seems to be taking it in a very different direction than what we know of what Jane Austen was going to do with the story. We do have some information about that because she told family members. Um, and so she's Joan Aiken is going in a in a different direction, which I guess is fair enough because she's Joan Aiken, she's not Jane Austen. So, but we'll see. So far, it's um it's okay. And I am also still making my way slowly through the mysteries of Udolpho by Anne Radcliffe. Um, I'm still yeah, <laughs> I I don't think I'll get this finished this month because it's it's quite a big book. It's over 600 pages. Um, and so far, I'm like, I'm 140 pages in and she hasn't even gotten to the castle of Udolpho yet. So <laughs> a part of me is like, come on, let's get to the gothic parts of this story. <laughs> but it's, it's good. I mean, it's well written. It is interesting. Um, but again, it's a slower, a slower read. And then finally, I am reading Murder at Mansfield Park by Lynn Shepard. I am about maybe about halfway halfway through this I'm really loving this it's a murder mystery um, set in the world of Mansfield Park but what I'm loving is that Lynn Shepard is has taken the story and turned it on its head a little bit because Fanny Price first of all Fanny Price is an heiress in this story. She's not the poor relation, she's the rich relation. And that switch alone is fascinating. But she's also made other switches to characters, which is so interesting. For example, Mary Crawford is a very different character to who she is in Mansfield Park. And um, yeah, I just find it so, so fascinating. So for example, at the beginning, there is names of the principal persons. Now, if you know Mansfield Park, you will find this fascinating. At Mansfield Park, the family, Sir Thomas Bertram, Baronet, Lady Bertram, his wife, Thomas Bertram, his eldest son, who in this book is 19, Miss Mariah Bertram, his eldest daughter, William Bertram, his second son away at sea, Miss Julia Bertram, his second daughter, who is 14. Miss Fanny Price, niece to Sir Thomas, daughter to Mr. Price of Lesingby Hall, Cumberland, and his wife Frances, sister to Lady Bertram. The household, uh, then you get um, the servants, which is good. <clears throat> At the White House, Mrs. Norris, sister to Lady Bertram, Edmund Norris, her stepson, interesting. 
at the parsonage, the Reverend Dr. Grant, Mrs. Grant, Henry Crawford, half-brother to Mrs. Grant, and Miss Mary Crawford, his sister. At Southerton, James Rushworth, son to Sir Richard Rushworth, and the Honorable John Yates. In this book, John Yates is Rushworth's friend, which is interesting. So, isn't that fascinating? The other thing that I am finding really fascinating in this is that Lynn Shepard has made the assumption that the characters from Jane Austen's novels all exist in the same universe. So, so that's really interesting. So a perfect example of that is this sentence. Henry Crawford received a letter, a business letter. It is from Sir Robert Ferris, he said as he turned the pages. You remember, Mary, I had the laying out of his pleasure grounds at Netherfield last year after he purchased the estate from Charles Bingley. <laughs> so we have Charles Bingley from Pride and Prejudice and Robert Ferris from Sense and Sensibility in a book about Mansfield Park. <laughs> so yeah, I am loving, I am loving this so far. It's fascinating. So that's it. That is what I read and am currently reading for Jane Austen July. Have you read any of these books? I would love to chat with you about them in the comment section down below and I will see you for another video soon.